thanks for joining us. I'm Alice. And I'm Darren. And we're from UTEL, United Technologies Europe Limited. Want to know more about fibre optics? Well, we're here to help. Health and safety is rarely anyone's favourite topic, but here at UTEL, we think it's the most important thing in the world. So, with that in mind, here's our guide to staying safe when working with fibre optics. In today's video, we're going to look at eye safety, bare fibre fragments and shards, chemical hazards, fire safety, and environmental hazards. To kick us off, here are a few true or false questions. True or false? If you look into a live fibre optic cable, the light will burn into your retina and you will go instantly blind and your head will explode. This one is false and not just the head exploding bit. The odds of going blind as the result of looking into a fibre optic cable are virtually zero, but there are still risks involved if you're not careful. OK, true or false? The average British home is twice as dangerous as the workplace. And the answer is... False. The average British home is actually 10 times more dangerous. It's the Lego, I'm telling you. Maybe we should all start spending more time at work? Moving swiftly on. True or false? 5.5 million working days were lost in the UK last year due to workplace injuries. This one is actually true. 5.5 million days is the equivalent of over 15,000 years in lost work. 15 thousand years. Whilst this figure may seem high, it still makes Britain one of the safest places in the world to work. But we can still make it even safer. So how did you do? Health and safety doesn't have to be boring, but it is there for a reason. So let's take a couple of minutes to explore it. First, eye safety. Let's start with some do's and don'ts around eye safety. Do make sure you've turned off the laser before inspecting any connectors or equipment in a live fibre optic network. Why? Well, let's take a quick look at the science behind fibre optics to put it all into context. Optical fibres are very thin glass fibres which transmit a beam of infrared light from a laser to a receiver or photodetector, often over very long distances. But what is infrared light? Infrared light is part of the electromagnetic spectrum alongside X-rays, UV light and radio waves, all types of electromagnetic radiation with different wavelengths and frequencies. Visible light, the light that we can see, has a wavelength of 400 to 700 nanometers. The infrared light used in fibre optics typically uses 1310 to 1650 nanometer wavelengths. This means infrared has a longer wavelength and a lower frequency than visible light and is therefore invisible to the human eye. And that's the important bit. The laser light used in fibre optics is invisible to the human eye. However, not invisible to everyone. Did you know that vipers, pythons and boas can see infrared? Small holes on their faces called pit organs allow them to detect infrared radiation from warm bodies up to one metre away. How good. So that's another reason to be afraid of snakes then. But hang on. Don't get confused if you're thinking but I've seen the light in a fibre optic cable before. You're not going crazy. You've probably just seen someone using either a visual tracer or a visual fault locator, both of which use a bright red non-harmful light. But aren't all lasers dangerous? Lasers are classified for safety. From class one, meaning if used as intended, it's highly unlikely to pose any hazard to health, like the laser in your DVD player. Up to class four, meaning treat with extreme caution. These are the ones used in James Bond films, or the kind used in industrial manufacturing and at laser light shows. The lasers found in fibre optics are nowhere near that powerful. Ours are typically class one or two. Sorry to disappoint. For more about the science behind lasers, check out some of our other fibre optics videos that are coming soon. So, now that we understand that fibre optics uses low risk lasers emitting invisible infrared light, let's keep going. Do wear safety glasses with side shields, even over any normal glasses you may wear. Did you know that the eye's natural defence against sudden exposure to bright light is blinking? However, since the eye cannot see infrared light, it has no auto defence against it. That's why we need the safety glasses. Wearing them is especially important when cutting or stripping fibres, as they also offer protection from flying fibre fragments. 
More on this later on. Don't look directly into the end of the fibre to check if a cable is live or dark. You won't see anything, but it could still damage your eyes, so don't even try. Or you might end up needing one of these. Or one of these. OK, no you won't. But you get the point. You could still suffer from blurry vision, temporary blindness or blind spots. For this reason, keep those safety glasses on and do replace the protective dust cap on the end of an unmated connector. Do use a power meter or an optical fibre identifier to check quickly and easily if a cable is live or dark. That's exactly what they're designed for. Did you know, when aimed directly at the retina, a typical laser pointer is probably more dangerous than anything found in fibre optics? This is because the laser pointer focuses the beam on a certain point rather than allowing the light to fan out in a cone as it does in fibre optics. Don't touch your face, particularly your eyes, after working with fibre optics, especially if you're a contact lens wearer. Thoroughly wash your hands to remove any chemicals or glass fragments from your hands. Do work in a well-lit area. Do only use microscopes with a built-in infrared filter. And do remember that fibre has a memory. If you pull it one way, it can and will spring back into place. Keep your distance to avoid any nasty surprises. And if you're cleaning the fusion splicer, don't blow any dust or fibre scraps into your eye. Now that may sound like a really stupid thing to say, but when you see those tiny bits of dust inside the splicer, the automatic reaction may well be to just blow them all away. For more about splicing, check out the video guide here on YouTube. You still got them safety glasses on? Good. Keep it that way. Number two, bare fibre fragments and shards. These are probably the biggest danger when it comes to working with fibre optics. Stripping, cleaving and cutting bare fibre puts you in contact with very small, sharp pieces of glass. So, what to do? Do handle fibre optics with extreme care. Whilst they're designed to be fairly hard wearing, you still need the very fine glass component inside them to remain intact. Bare fibre is sharp and can easily cause cuts or tiny broken fragments can get embedded into your skin. These can be almost impossible to find and remove, potentially leading to serious irritation and or infection. Do take care when working with blades such as cutters or strippers, especially if your fibre has a metal strength member inside its jacket. These can be especially sharp when cut. Unlike the person in this picture, do you wear PPE, that's personal protective equipment, such as cut resistant gloves and a disposable apron to protect your clothing and minimise the chance of fibre particles getting transferred elsewhere. Do pay careful attention to where any cut fibre fragments go. Small pieces can easily break away and fly off at an angle. Also, don't let cut fragments fall on the floor. They can easily disappear into the carpet or get stuck in the soles of your shoes and moved around. A non-carpeted floor makes for much easier cleaning if you are cutting and stripping fibres. Don't eat or drink anywhere around fibre optics. Spillages and crumbs are not the issue. Tiny cut shards of fibre can get carried into the air and into your drink or onto your lunch. And if ingested, they can cause serious internal bleeding. Doesn't sound too appetising, does it? Glass sandwich, anybody? Do you work on a dark coloured, non-reflective, chemical resistant mat to make any cut fibre easier to see. Don't try to pick up any cut glass fibres by hand. Always use tweezers or sticky tape. Do dispose of any fibre fragments safely in a suitable container such as a sharps bin and then get rid of this container safely. Discard any used sticky tape carefully, folding it in on itself so no scraps can get loose. Do thoroughly clean your work area at the end of each day. This includes blotting it with sticky tape to catch any of those stray, practically invisible cut fibres. Are you still with us? Excellent. Let's move on to chemical hazards. Working with fibre optics can involve the use of chemicals such as cleaning fluids, solvents and adhesives. So, do make sure all chemicals are clearly labelled, safely stored and used following the manufacturer's guidance. This should include reading the relevant safety data sheet and understanding the guidelines for working with chemicals in your country. In the UK, these are covered by COSH, Care of Substances Hazardous to Health. Do handle all chemicals with care. Avoid contact with your skin as much as possible, particularly your eyes, and wash your hands thoroughly after use. Remember that repeated exposure, however brief, may lead to the development of skin allergies or irritation. 
Do ensure you work in a well-ventilated area to avoid inhaling any chemical fumes and definitely don't ingest them. Working with chemicals is yet another reason not to eat or drink at your workstation. Moving on, number four, fire safety. Some of the cleaning liquids and chemicals used in fibre optic processes are flammable, so don't smoke anywhere near fibre optics. Do keep all flammable and combustible materials safely away from the curing ovens and fusion splices. Last but not least, number five, environmental hazards. Remember, it's not just about what you're doing, it's about what's happening around you. So, do pride yourself on a safe, clean and tidy work area, unlike this photo. Do test all your equipment regularly to ensure it is kept in full working order. Do follow a systematic cleaning routine for your work area and all the equipment in it. Do display all the necessary safety signs and posters, including laser warnings and barriers if you're testing lasers. Do respect the safety of others by explaining any dangers to them, especially if they're visitors who may not know the risks. Side note, health and safety in fibre optics is a massive topic, so we're trying to keep things pretty general here. But if you're working in fibre optics, then your working environment could well be inside or outside, underground, overground or on the ground. For example, the working environment of a fibre optics engineer is fraught with hazards and risks. There should be clear company safety guidelines for all tasks assigned. And there we have it. Hopefully a lot of that was pretty obvious, but maybe not all of it. And you can never be too careful, we reckon. If you're working with fibre optics, then you owe it to yourself and the rest of your team to take the time to understand all the hazards and risks involved in order to create a safe working environment for everyone. Don't be that person who takes the risk. When working with fibre optics, do follow any and all current guidelines for working with fibre optics. Don't take any risks. Do remember, it's not just about you, it's the safety of those around you too. Do respect the fibre. Want to find out more? Then check out some of the other videos in this series, such as fibre optic splicing guide and demo, cleaning tools and techniques, and connectors and polishes. These are available here on YouTube or on the UTEL website. Some of them are genuinely interesting, we promise. Thank you for watching today's video. We hope you found it helpful. Don't forget to check out the rest of our videos in this series, maybe even subscribe to our channel. For more about what we do, why not check out UTEL's website or get in touch. But from all of us here at UTEL, thank you for watching and hopefully see you again soon.